All right, folks, so a uh, new video starting, and this is the uh, the Turbo Outrun cab that I restored. You can see it's running now. It's running a RetroPie uh, setup, and as you can see, the wheel is working uh, like a wheel, not just like a, a glorified uh, button, uh, but it's uh, taking input, so the pedals are working, the gear is working. So uh, in this video today, I want to show you how I made the setup how to configure it, how to do all that kind of stuff and uh, have a solution that you can have play in the pie. This in the cab, this guy here, uh, original Outrun is playing the retro pie, which is another option done by Smarty. Uh, it's probably the best option, so it's gonna be the, the best <laughs> solution. It's probably not gonna be, um, not gonna be much more expensive than doing it this way, but this is a already done solution. It can run pretty much a lot of games. But uh, here, if you can't wait, if you're not on the waiting list and you want a solution before that, uh, I'm going to show you how to just at least have a, a somewhat workable and playable uh, pie setup for your cabinet. So uh, let's go back to the uh, workbench. All right, so first things first, let's go over the requirements for this uh, this little uh, build setup. What you need, you need uh, obviously an R, uh, Raspberry Pi. This is a Raspberry Pi 3. You also need something like uh, like this. This is an APAC Ultimark makes that. Connects uh, via USB to this guy, and it allows you to use, well, buttons and switches and pots as a controller. And this is what's uh, really important. You'll be able to use pots, uh, analog pots uh, with this, which is what the wheel on the and the pedals on the Outrun use. Uh, what I use here is the RGB Pi, which is a, a, a just an RGB connector that connects to the GPIO here. It converts that to JAMA output. Now, there is another version where you can just solder stuff directly onto output, but technically you can solder this um, as well. What I like to do is make an adapter, a JAMA adapter to the Outrun connector from there. You also need, obviously, an SD card and uh, you will need, uh, obviously, an SD card reader if you don't have one uh, <laughs> to connect that to your PC. Now, these are just the bare minimums. Uh, what's good to have is some form of test setup. So, micro switches. I have here uh, three micro switches. I have one pot that I use for the wheel, but um, you can swap that afterwards to you check the uh, pedals. There's two pedals as well. So you might really ideally want three pots uh, of sorts. And you'll need one uh, button for the start, one button for test uh, service, uh, one button for uh, coin, and one button button as well for, this, for the gear uh, shift, uh, which is going to be an issue we'll run into at some point. But I'll explain that when we uh, when we get to it. So you need uh, four switches ideally and three pots. Or oh, and obviously you need a USB connector to connect this uh, guy to uh, this guy. So you know this is quite a few parts already uh, right away. Oh, and I forget. Obviously you need to make yourself a small JAMA uh, adapter. That uh, not this, but it'll be a female adapter that connects to your Outrun. Um, uh, loom as well um, in your cab. So, you know, you, you need to source these. These are sort of ID type connector of sorts, and you just need to get a few of these. So these are all extra expenses that people don't really necessarily think about when they're doing these builds, but it all adds up. And to be honest, to be honest, I should really say this before I start the video. Um, by the time you get all this gear, if you haven't any of it, by the time you get all of it, it might well be just as expensive as getting a Smarty Pie from Smarty. So just, you know, consider these options. This is a good one to have as a backup, but price-wise, it won't be much cheaper really than a Smarty Pie. You have to factor in shipping for everything as well on top if you don't get them from the same source. So a couple of things I should mention you'll need as well is some form of uh, JAMA connection. So female connector. I hear I have a super gun, but a female connector uh, connected straight to a a switcher power supply will do. You need five volts and twelve volts and uh, RGB out. So here I've RGB going to this monitor, and also 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 you need some way of configuring the ja the uh, Raspberry Pi um, initially. So a keyboard would be ideal. USB keyboard here. 
most people would have one i assume at this stage and a usb controller uh, we'll come back to that afterwards but like a ps4 controller or an xbox controller or even a pc a usb controller will be recognized by a uh, retropie i just wanted to mention all that i don't factor it in the cost of of this build i assume most people would have those but it's good to uh, it's it, it's you know it's good to mention that you need extra stuff as well all right, so our first step here is going to be to go to retropie.co.uk, and uh, this is the landing page. There's a link here right away that brings you to the download page. So here, well, you can give the option to uh, donate if you'd like to do so. If you use Retropie for a while on a number of device, you know, it's a nice thing to do. And here you've, uh, we are selecting, so we're doing this on the Raspberry Pi 3 uh, B, I think here now. So let's click on that and it's going to download it. Uh, it's about 800 megs. Um, you will need, a, you know, a bit of patience or a fast internet connection. And we're going to come back right after that. Okay, once your image is downloaded, um, let's head to uh, documents here. And you actually have a lot of information on installing what an emulator is what roms is if you're new to all that kind of stuff uh, i assume uh, you have a certain amount of knowledge so let's just uh, go on first installation here and it's it's going to run you exactly on how to uh, how to install retropy onto your raspberry pi uh, if you've never done this before it's a pretty pretty stiff as uh, straightforward thing to do here uh, but essentially you're going to need a well the image that uh, we've just downloaded a micro sd card and uh, we're going to need an imager. So here uh, they recommend the Raspberry Pi OS imager. So we're going to download that as well. So, all right, so it's been uh, downloaded. Uh, we need to install it next. So let's do that. It's going to run through the installation and you can uh, run it right after. Sometimes on, uh, I have had it before, it will tell you that it cannot download the Raspberry Pi image from the internet so just close that and restart the software all right so we got our imager installed and here i have a small sd card uh, this is two gigabyte and this should be plenty for our um, purpose here we're only installing one game here and uh, a small raspberry um, uh, retro pie image so this should be enough so we're gonna run uh, the installer all right, and here we can choose our operating system. Um, if the image got downloaded from the internet, you will actually see uh, a diff few different options here, including including one for emulation and game OS and RetroPie. So we can actually select the image from here. Uh, we probably didn't have to install it, but I just want to make sure that we have the latest image. So we're going to use custom, and we're going to point that to our... Uh, where is my download folder and select our image and next thing we're going to choose a storage so here is yeah this guy's this uh, two gigabyte image and we're going to click on write now this is going to take a while so i suggest you do something else uh, in the meantime so i was wrong uh, two gigabytes wasn't quite big enough so i ended up using a 16 gigabyte uh, uh, sd card all right, our image is installed now. It took under just um, a short of 10 minutes and uh, it will prompt us now to remove the SD card. Before we do that, we're gonna do one thing uh, is we need to update right away the uh, DT overlay. Um, and uh, the reason we need to do that is we want our Raspberry Pi to be compatible with a, a, a CRT uh, in this case. Uh, 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 CRT uh, monitor. So uh, to do that, we need to enable the GPIO, which is the connector part on the uh, Raspberry Pi to output uh, RGB onto that. And then we're going to tap the uh, uh, the RGB Pi adapter uh, to output to our CRT. So uh, we need to tell the uh, DT overlays, which is device tree overlay. Uh, there's information about that online. I will maybe link it, or maybe we'll do a, a small just a explainer um, as we're doing it. But uh, so we need to enable that in a config file that sits on one of the partition of the Raspberry Pi. So we're just going to open Explorer. All right, so we're going to open our partition here, uh, which is this guy, and you'll see actually right away, and let me go back, that it's no longer a 16 gig partition. It just says uh, 255 megabytes. And this is because what we have here now is the remaining boot partition, which is a 
what is it, NTFS uh, formatted or something else, um, yeah, FAT formatted. The rest is in Linux partition, so that's why we can't see it on Windows. And here we can see a number of things, um, but in here is the config file. So we got a config file open here. We can see most of it is just, uh, uh, it's uncommented uh, stuff. There's only a few lines here uh, of uh, uh, enabled stuff. So we first need to change the uh, DT overlay. Actually, the DT overlay here is disabled. Uh, and we need to change that to, um, well, let, actually, I'll tell you what, let me load an existing uh, config file uh, for this. So we need to do a few changes. And this is a DT or, um, uh, a config file I pulled from another build of RetroPy, which is CRT Pi or something like that. And I uh, tinker with it to make it work. But... Um, the DT overlay, so this is disabled. The DT overlay we need to use is the DPI 24. There's a few other settings, including the, um, the timings for the uh, the screen size, um, uh, which is important as well for the CRT, and the DPI output format. They recommend uh, uh, 519 for Retro Think Ultimate and zero for everything else. That doesn't quite work um, for me the way uh, uh, I did it. So I use a six here. I will put all of this. You can pretty much copy all of this and paste it uh, under. Actually, I'll tell you what, I'll put everything here, uh, all of this under all in the standard config file. And you can pretty much just. Uh, Remove everything under all and paste uh, the uh, all those lines. And now we can remove our SD card from our SD card reader and put that into our Raspberry file. Uh, Pi. Um, a quick explanation uh, of what it just did. The uh, overlay is uh, something that just um, it's overlay trees that defines how hardware is uh, enabled, uh, namely the GPIO. The GPIO is that port i don't have one here let me get a raspberry pi handy the gpio is this port here and so our our uh our pi uh, rgb jama pi adapter is going to sit right on top of this so this has this can be enabled to output different um functions really and in this configuration the dpi 24 uh, we can uh, use the pins to output you see green green red red blue blue so output rgb including sync signals so this is what this is going to do it's going to output sync signals and rgb into this and the the way this uh, rgb pi uh, adapter is done is it takes all that there's probably some uh, because this is for VGA output, really, it's probably some amplification going on, and then it outputs that to a signal that is suitable for CRTs. So this is what we've just done. We've uh, made our uh, overlay output, where is it gone? Overlay output suitable for uh, CRTs here, and uh, did some uh, configurations with timings and uh, resolution, and a few other bits to make a life easier, and... Uh, this part as well, uh, which I'm not quite sure uh, what this does, but six was the value I found worked for me for a CRT. Uh, so if it doesn't work for you, maybe uh, maybe tinker with that, but I think this should be okay. And it's time to uh, test that this works in our uh, in our RetroPy setup. All right, so we got our SD card all sorted. We got all our gear. We connected the RGB Pi to our a Raspberry Pi. Now keep in mind, the JAMA for some reason on this is inverted. So uh, be careful and uh, let me show you. This is uh, your JAMA uh, RGB Pi connector and it's actually inverted. Whoever did the design here, I'm assuming it was easier because of the GPIO pins and the uh, the surface area for drawing all the lines, but essentially they flip the uh, the JAMA connector. Normally this is uh, this is what ground ground five volt uh, minus five twelve should be over there. So when you connect it, be careful because you will burn your Raspberry Pi, and then this build will become much much more expensive. Flip either your JAMA connector or your um, your Raspberry Pi. Uh, set up and connect it to your JAMA board 
I'm gonna do that now. And give it some power. Get five volt ish. This should be plenty. And let's wait to. And there you go. Right away. If you've copy and pasted those uh, that data that I showed you uh, previously, uh, it should be working right away. So this will take a while to load up. Uh, it'll go through uh, a lot of. Uh, just uh, service uh, starting and self checks and all that kind of stuff, and then it will load the uh, what well, the retro pie, and what I think it's retro arch or something like that emulation station. There you go. So here uh, it's going to recognize that there's no controllers uh, detected yet. All right, so I got my controller plugged in. Um, here it's uh, it's kind of a, a Xbox controller for windows really so it tells us here press a on your device to configure it uh, press f4 to quit at any time so uh, we can actually quit but we'll still need a controller to navigate through the uh, the um uh, raspberry uh, to the retro pie so here i'm going to press a it's going to recognize it as an xbox controller and it's going to go through the list of control and we just need to map them so d-pad up you pad down, you pad left, right, the start button, and my select button here isn't working. <laughs> All right, so we're in the RetroPie menu here. We're going to go in the uh, configuration, and here we're going to go right at the bottom to the Wi Fi menu. So, straight away, it tells you that it hasn't uh, recognized your Wi Fi setup. You need to set that up. Here, we're going to go to system options, configure system. You need to uh, actually press the uh, bright button on your um, on your D-pad and press select. And here we're going to set up the uh, uh, wireless uh, LAN. Uh, so we're going to select our country, wherever you are in the world. Ireland, uh, let's press OK. Enter your SSID. So you're going to need to enter your the uh, the name of your uh, network, local network. So I'm going to enter that. Uh, just bear with me. I need to remember what it is. Next, it's going to ask you for your password. So I'm going to enter that here as well. And once you've done that, it brings you back to this menu and you can just uh, reboot. All right, the system will uh, have gone through an entire reboot. You can actually go back to the Wi-Fi menu uh, to double check that your Wi-Fi is actually saved and enabled and in this case there it is there is our connection so we can just exit that and now we're gonna have to update our system okay so after setting up the wi-fi in our raspberry pi uh, we're gonna um actually update our retro pi setup so uh here if you go to retro pi setup let's click on that it's going to load some things sometimes in the background if you don't have them so don't panic um also that error with the audio mixer will fix that afterwards i just want to update the pi first and here we're going to go to update are you sure you want to install the packages press yes and it's going to start downloading uh, um, a lot of packages and dependencies for you and update your raspberry pi setup so you can actually uh, or your retro pi setup so you can actually install um uh, advanced main 1.4 just uh, click yes to pretty much everything <laughs> it's going to take a while so just be patient and um, y you know it, it might feel it's going on for ages i've had it run for sometimes half an hour or maybe more i lost track so just uh, let it do its thing and come back yeah come back to it when it's done all right so our packages have been uh, updated and installed uh, let's uh, exit out of here come on go to manage packages uh, here we're gonna go to optional packages and there you go we look for advanced MAME 1.4 um, and we're gonna install from pre-compile uh, bins I recommend that otherwise you might run into trouble especially if you're not entirely familiar but um, so what we've done previously we updated updated all our packages so that we could actually install and uh, and, and run um main advanced main 1.4 so we're just going to install this if you want to install from pre-compile again it's going to take a minute or two uh probably more and uh, we'll uh, go back uh, once we're all done there you go um once it's done it'll go back to the screen and it'll show you if <laughs> it'll ask you to reinstall from binaries or whatever you want to do but that's a sign that uh, we've installed it successfully and it offers you an option to reinstall now we'll go back to the main menu. We're pretty much done. I'm just going to do one thing here is show IP uh, because, because we're going to need our IP um, 
to connect, we want to set up the FTP connection to our Raspberry Pi. So here, our IP is um, shown here, 118. So we're going to use that to connect to our Raspberry Pi. We can pretty much run Outrun here at this point. We just need to put the ROM into the Raspberry Pi. And because the file format is different, we can't just plug... Uh, this is a, um, a, a Linux, you know, type of file format. So we can just plug the um, SD card into our computer. It's not going to work. So we need to um, FTP into it. We need to make sure that SSH is enabled. So we're going to go to um, Raspi config uh, interface option. There you go. Interface and then SSH here. We're going to select that and we really like uh, to be uh, SSH server to be enabled. Uh, let's click yes. Okay. And finish. Okay. I'm on the computer here. I've got FireZilla uh, loaded. I'm just going to go into uh, this icon right here. And uh, this is where you manage your, your servers. And we're going to open this one. Um, I have everything uh, typed in already. Let's just uh, copy this, but we're going to create a new style site. I'm going to call this uh, Pi, and we're going to select the uh, SFTP, SSH, File Transfer Protocol. The host is going to be your IP address. You can ignore a port. Login type is going to be normal. User uh, is the default user, Pi, and the password, Raspberry copy this and paste it here. Uh, this is the default user and password for all uh, RetroPie setup. Uh, you can set it otherwise, but really if it's just going to be you connecting to this, you don't really need to bother. Uh, we can click on OK to save or connect here. Um, doesn't matter. And there you go. We've connected and uh, here we are into our file system for our Raspberry Pi. Right, once your FTP is uh, set up, you're going to go, it's going to bring you here to the uh, uh, this folder, home, Pi. So we're going to navigate to the uh, RetroPi folder here and the ROM folder here. So this is, these are actually shortcuts um, in the, uh, the system folder. So the, this is very handy. Uh, ROM folder and you go to the arcade uh, folder. Now there is a advanced MAME folder as well. Um, I never actually use it. I always use this uh, this folder here, and you'll probably find a few other folders in there. In this case, we've advanced uh, well, name and one. I think this is one point four or two. I can't remember which uh, year uh, was which. But anyway, doesn't matter. We'll put the um, ROMs in this folder. You can put them in each folder if you want them to run on a specific version of MAME. But in this case, we just have 1.4, I think. So we're just going to put them here. And that's all we need to do. Um, the ROM itself, you'll have to source and look for it yourself. I can't tell you where to get them and I can't send them to you. But um, uh, the, the ROMs for Outrun are pretty much readily available, really. So we are going to put the ROM here and uh, we'll go back to our uh, Raspberry Pi. And once we've boosted our Raspberry Pi, it'll actually show, uh, before it would show just a retro Pi. now it actually shows Arcade, uh, which indicates that there is a ROM or m many ROMs in there. Uh, it's kind of hard to read, but there, yeah, there it is, the outro, and we can just press on that just to check. Here it's telling us it's uh, launching it on Advanced MAME. Don't touch anything, uh, otherwise you'll bring you to the config menu and... There you go, we have Outrun running on a Raspberry Pi uh, onto a CRT. Um, so now <laughs> the fun begins of configuring uh, Outrun for our analog uh, controls. So next I've set up the APAC. This is the sort of recommended uh, setup on their site for the pot. So uh, this goes to ground, which is here. You got a ground tab here. That's the one. Uh, the middle one goes to uh, um, right and left. And we might need to invert these depending on the game sometimes. I think we can invert them on MAME as well. It doesn't quite matter. Also, I've put the buttons, all the buttons here, uh, switch one, two, and three. It doesn't really matter which one you set it to here. We, we're going to set those in MAME afterwards in setup. And uh, if you don't have enough space for all the grounds, you can put your ground for the buttons uh, here, the switcher. It doesn't really matter. So that's all set up. And now we need to find out sort of which part this guy is connected to the APAC so we can uh, configure 
uh, our buttons. So we're going to use a tool called uh, Putty. So let's download Putty on the computer and uh, and test it. Actually, before we download Putty, we need to do one thing, which is um, we're going to uh, load FireZilla and go to um, well configure our controller um, or tell the Raspberry Pi this controller. So we could actually do it with the Raspberry Pi UI, like we did for the gamepad. But because we are missing so many buttons and it's hard to know which is which, uh, I've saved you the hassle and I've actually done a uh, a file that um, I've, I created already. So uh, we're going to go, uh, actually not to home, we're going to go back to the uh, root folder here and we're going to go to OPT RetroPie, uh, I think it's configs, uh, all RetroArch and autoconfig. And here I've done it already. I'm going to delete that and I'm going to add this um, pre-made uh, file that I um, I I, um, I created previously when I, I I was testing all this. This is the what's inside of the file. I'll put all this in the uh, description as well. Uh, if you want to copy and paste into the file, now the name should be the same. So um, it should be essentially this uh, for an Ultimark uh, APAC controller. So just create a, a te or a, a text file CFG um, dot CFG instead of dot text and paste all this content here all right so just go to putty.org uh, it's simple enough to remember and we can download it here uh, we look for the msi uh, 60 there you go all right so we've got a uh, putty here now installed uh, we're going to enter the address of our pi 18 118 i think um as the host name, uh, you don't need to change anything. It's SSH here by default. Uh, it asks you to log in as, so the username is pi, and the password, as we said, is raspberry with one hand. And now you are in your, look at that, retro pi. And we're gonna navigate. I'm gonna leave that in the description as well to this folder, opt retro pi emulators, advanced mame 1.4 forward slash bin advj and run this now um what this will do and actually you can see it's loading so it it actually reads our control live and it should tell us which one is our controller so whenever there's a change to any of the controller it's going to read that and tell us what the value is i'm going to leave this here and move the pot on the uh, raspberry pi and you'll see what happens And now the buttons, I can test these as well. It's always hard to uh, get the pot to uh, to relax, but what happens is our buttons is going to be uh, are going to appear here whenever we press them, as we've seen. I uh, think so. You can see when we press one of the buttons, it's going to tell us which button on the APAC uh, was pressed. And here, Joy One, uh, whenever we change that, it changed value. So. This is going to be joy one essentially and i bet joystick two or maybe joystick zero is going to be our um xbox and controller yes yeah, joystick zero is our xbox controller or joystick one is going to be our apac and uh, number so this is just handy to identify uh, which one uh, is which um it can be confusing to read the screen but just uh, have a look here see which one is which and when we move the pot or press one of the buttons see which one moves so uh our joy zero here press the button on it uh, this is our xbox controller joy one is going to be our uh, a pack and it's moving on its own because the pot isn't exactly overly precise so whenever there's a slight or it's sitting between two values it can change but this is uh, how you identify which port a usb port your joystick is connected to this is important for afterwards so make a mental note of that and we're going to continue okay next um we are going to leave this folder all uh, so stay in under config here we're going to go down to mame uh, add mame um this is the folder for advanced mame and here you will find this uh, uh, file here advanced mame dash 1.4 uh, rc uh, this is the config file for uh, advanced mame 1.4 for controls so we're going to copy that to our desktop so i have this open now in uh, in notepad plus plus so this has all your sort of default um, settings for 
advanced main 1.4 when whenever you open it you can set the uh, the where the artwork is going to pick be picked up and all that kind of stuff so we can actually tie you know change and tailor things quite a bit um we're not going to concern ourselves with that we're going to look at the input map um settings and we're going to look for uh input map for player one and we're looking for paddle uh, so not mouse, not anything, paddle, there you go, paddle X. And we are going to use this setting. This is a setting that's going to be used for the uh, wheel, essentially, uh, for outrun, anyway. Uh, so, and we're going to use uh, paddle X, pedal brake, and uh, which one is the other one? Pedal gas as well. So we're going to set these up. So we want to configure that uh, not as auto, but as a joystick i know this is uh, somewhat uh, <laughs> counterintuitive uh, but this, this is the only setting i found would work in an analog um setting the documentation i will add the documentation to this uh, a link to it uh, to advanced main this is the documentation input map uh, the analog setting here is paddle x or pa yeah whatever paddle x P1 paddle X is here. There you go. Uh, next one is going to be either mouse, joystick, ball, or whatever. Here uh, we're setting this joystick, and we're going to enter value of the joystick part that we're using, which control we're using. So the control is going to be in this case. I think it's a stick. Again, I, you know, uh, somewhat confusing, but uh, it doesn't matter. And which axe we're using? So uh, X, Y, or Z. Uh, and we're gonna enter those as number to make things even more confusing. All right, so uh, we need to use uh, brackets. I don't think there's a space. Uh, bracket, uh, uh, this is joystick one, uh, stick and X axis for paddle X. The brake, we haven't set up our brake, but uh, I will show you afterwards. The brake, we're gonna use the uh, uh, sorry, no, for the, 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 the pedal we're going to use pretty much the same stuff, except we're going to use the y-axis uh, because what we we put our pot under the up and down, or no, the right and left, and we can use the up and down to set up our uh, uh, pedal gas, essentially, and map it there as that. And then uh, we can use the pedal brake here, and what we'll do is we'll use the so I, that's where I'm not entirely sure which is going to be my I think is going to be uh, joystick two because the Ultimark has two sides and the one side is joystick one the other one is joystick two uh, and uh, or is is one plus one essentially it's going to be the next one and we're going to use that as a pedal brake and we can use the right and left so it's going to be the white axis the um, uh, right and left the y axis so i think we're all done here um essentially we can we could set up the uh, all the button the player one and all that it's actually much easier to set them up in inside mame mame let's uh, let's put that back into our raspberry pi config and reboot our raspberry pi and uh, see what happens all right so we are back in front of our outrun and pie setup <clears throat> so we've got a pot here uh, our three buttons so this is what i was saying uh, here we used uh, right and left for the pot for control um for your pot for um the accelerator i recommend using up and down here and for the uh, uh, pot for the brake you can use right and left on the other side of uh, the controller number two so you might just have to go back to that um ad uh, vj um tool just to check you know move the pot and check which joystick it is it should be if this one is one this should be that plus one so this should be two um but i don't have enough parts actually to uh, test it here uh, but this should be a bare bone setup and should uh, should be a uh, plenty enough to get you uh, started and and working so we've got out from here um what we need to have is our keyboard um connected here um so we're gonna press the tab um key on the keyboard to access the main menu and uh, we're gonna go to input this game and now we can map 
our controls, our buttons. So what we want is the player start uh, button, the coin one. Um, you don't need coin two on on uh, Outrun, but you can set it up as the main, the same as a coin one. Service uh, mode, not service one, service mode, and player one button. Start is going to be uh, our. There you go. It's recognized. So it says joystick two here because in our config file we start from zero. So. This is joystick zero and this is joystick one, but for MAME starts on one. So this is going to be joystick one. This is going to be joystick two. The other one is going to show up as joystick three uh, if you set that up uh, like that. Uh, so keep that in mind. It's a bit confusing, but uh, joystick two here is the same as joystick one in the config file. Uh, the coin button, we're going to set it as this guy. Uh, trigger button, uh, whichever one was uh, was is is which here in this case and then we are looking for the service mode is going to be that last button and the reason you want to have the service mode button enabled is because now we press this we get to the service menu and if everything works uh, we should be able to move this arrow with our pot uh, which should be the wheel normally and indeed it's it's moving and we're going to go to uh, well, you can run all the tests if you want, but you know, this is MAME, so it's going to come up as uh, okay. And we want to go to input test, press service button, and we can just double check that our pot is working as it should. And that once we have it resting on a certain value, it's it's staying there. It's staying there. Um, so that's perfect. Um, the uh, if you do if you do it any other way, uh, by the way, don't be tempted to change paddle analog, paddle decrease, paddle increase. These two actually will what they'll do is as soon as the control registers a one, it will start increasing the counter from moving one way or another. So it will look like your car is moving, but it'll uh, move at a, a steady rate. So it won't be an analog. It's a fake analog. It's a digital really uh, setting. A paddle analog here won't really work in that sense. So this is the only way to set up an analog control uh, the way I showed you. Uh, so next, uh, well, I suppose it won't hurt to set up the brake and accelerator, but really what I want to show you, oh yeah, we can test all our buttons here. Uh, start is working service is working uh, but there's no point really you know brake and uh, accelerator is going to be the same setting a little part here and a little part here and uh, uh, we've already added those values in the config file so as soon as you plug them in they should be recognized but what we need to do is set up the high and low gear and for this we need another um another uh, one of those uh, deep dip switches but what i'll do is i'll get i have a spare shifter so i'll get that and just show you what the uh, the operating principle is all right so here i have a spare uh, shifter from outrun essentially it's like well a lot of shifters as you switch the the lever it presses on a uh, micro switch. It works um, on the same principle as these. There's a slight difference though. You'll see the tabs here are all uh, at the end. Uh, here you got the ground tab on top and you got the uh, the other two tabs. So essentially when you when you short the, uh, when you press the button it shorts this tab and this tab. However when you don't short the button when you leave it depressed this tab and this tab are shorted. So this is why you rarely see those connected and some of the uh, micro switches don't even have that um, third tab. So here uh, we have our ground tab is actually in the middle and the uh, tab to press uh, is the top one. So I have that connected to a button here and I have our ground tab connected there. So we're gonna map this uh, once more to our uh, uh, control here. So it's gonna be the P1 button one and we're gonna press that. And what I'm gonna do um, is nothing happened because the uh, the lower tab isn't connected, but I'm going to pre press this and it's going to select. Okay, so J2 top, uh, this button now is our gear shift. I'm going to exit the menu, but you're going to see what happens if I go to the service and we're going to go to the input. 
And now if I press the lever, it's going to be a take a little bit of a gymnastics, but so I'm in low gear here and if I bring this to high gear, nothing happens. And what happens when I bring it back to low gear, it's going to bring it to high gear because every time essentially we press this button, it shifts between high gear and low gear. So that's no good. We don't want that behavior. What we want is that when we press uh, up, it brings uh, the button one way and we press down, it brings the button the other way, ideally low and high. So the third tab here, we're going to connect that to uh, this here, the same button. And we can see when we press the connection and actually um, uh, shifts the uh, gear shift. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna leave the phone aside for a second and connect those two wires, those two tabs to the same input here. All right, so these two are connected to this button and see what happens when I... So there you go, we got our gear shift working. Now there is a caveat uh, where when you're not pressing the game, you accidentally bring this or move this. When it's gone, it's not gonna register. And it could be the case that when you start the game, you have it in high here, but it's actually in low technically. So um, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's a trade-off of uh, just using MAME 1.4. It's been fixed in other versions of MAME 1.4. The only problem is I could not get the analog controls to work in those versions. And uh, by the looks of it, um, very few people have been able to. It seems that uh, MAME 1.4 is pretty much the only version where um, these will work with the app hike in that fashion. So if you've had better luck, let me know, but uh, this is the trade-off. Now, one thing you could do is actually put a, a maybe on the ground uh, lead, put another button that is always on, so connected to the th se uh, second tab here, unless you press it. And when you press it, you can bring the lever back up and you know press it, uh, uh, release it, and it'll reset your um, shifter to low gear. Or, if you don't want the hassle, just make sure that when you start the game, this guy is off. And, you know, that's it. Um, to be honest, I have have this setup in my Turbo Ultron. And, you know, even sometimes when I forget, I just know that the next gear, there's only two gears, the next gear is one movement away. And uh, it's not the end of the world. But it is a trade-off. Um, it's not a perfect solution. The other thing we haven't addressed is obviously the outputs for the motor. Now, that's not covered by the APAC. There's no outputs on this. So uh, this is beyond the scope of uh, this little uh, video. Um, and indeed, the um, start button won't light up. Uh, so you might need to leave the light permanently on or something like that. Again, it's a trade-off um, of, uh, you know, if you have a dead board, you don't, it's a waiting list for the Smarty Pie, um, or you can't just get your hands on one, and you have a few of these lying around. It's a very, very cheap replacement if you have the parts, uh, or at least a temporary replacement. Now, we still have one thing to do is to ha uh, set our Raspberry Pi to auto-start on outrun so this is going to be done in a config file um on the uh, on the computer using the ftp software so let's do that now uh one thing you want to do um that i forgot to mention when you set all your controls uh in the menu here uh you want to press exit and select exit uh, that way it will actually save your controls we're gonna run it again just to confirm that it has uh saved but it it should have saved everything now on to uh onto our controls and uh, let's just check yeah, input this game there you go yeah thumb trigger everything is saved all right we're back on the ftp uh, screen here we're going to navigate to this folder um normally it's going to bring you to uh, home and pi we're going to go back uh, up one and then go to opt retro pi config all and here you're going to see it's auto start dot sh so we're going to copy that to our desktop to edit it and this is what it looks like you're going to see uh, a single single uh, uh, line here that says emulation station. And just before that, we're going to copy this line. And I will put the, um, I will put the link or the, 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 this line so you can just copy and paste. Um, you might want to modify a few things. Uh, however, um, uh, one of them is the location of your ROM, just in case... Uh, for in, in instance, you use uh, the specific folder for each version of MAME, um, but I don't recommend that because we're just going to run one ROM onto one emulator. 
and then the uh, name of your actual ROM set that you're using. Here I'm just using the, uh, was it revision B uh, of Outrun, but that's it. Um, and what this does, it points to your uh, auto start line that uh, this is what uh, emulation uh, or, or RetroPie should boot to, the emulation station uh, using this. Uh, and we're all done. We're going to copy that back into our folder here. And we're going to reboot our Raspberry Pi. Okay, so it's going to go through all that. So there is ways now, once you've done all that, there's ways to have just a splash screen that won't display any of that. Uh, I will leave that up to you to just to tailor your, your system and maybe have a nice outrun screen or something like that instead of the, uh, the retro by um, startup sequence. But if we did everything right, and sometimes I don't, so we'll see. But there you go. It launches straight into Advanced Main 1.4 with the selected ROM. And uh, voila. Uh, so now when you start your Outrun machine, it will start automatically. There is one thing, one thing left, uh, which is to fix our sound. Actually, we don't. That was an issue uh, that seems to have been fixed with the whatever latest release. So uh, no problem there. But just for the sake of uh, you experimenting and finding out, just in case you uh, can't find your your sound, you will do that in sorry, you will do that in the menu here and just go to sound settings and here uh, in audio um, in the audio card. So default is what it was set at. Uh, sometimes um, updating the system will set it to one uh, of, of the other option uh, or null or but it seems to have been fixed. I, I was struggling with this one in the previous revision. So uh, that's great news. Um, but yeah, just reset it back to default. Or if that doesn't work, sometimes set it to something else in those options. You'll have to tinker. This is the only thing uh, that I couldn't quite figure out 100%. So you might have to tinker with the sound. Uh, I'm using the jack here uh, for the sound uh, because it just uh, it, it suited my needs. But there might be a way. I'm not sure exactly how the... Uh, there must be a way to set it out of the... Uh, the um, 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 JAMA Edge Connector. But keep in mind, this won't be JAMA. You will need to make an adapter. Anyway, there you go. This is it. This is how to set up a little uh, Raspberry Pi with an APAC and a few uh, leaf switches to run Outrun as it would work in a cab. Uh, I use the same 5K part here, but you can use any sort of value part. It's just, you know, at some point it won't go all the way. But just for testing, that's just uh, that's just fine. Any any. 5k 10k uh, will, will do plenty uh, and i recommend that you use a setup like that uh, just to set it up on the bench and then move that to your cab so to move that into your cab you will need to do uh, well, a little bit of wiring what i recommend is just using a jama edge connector female connector uh, uh, these should be um this is here a power drive connector, but it's these type of sort of uh, IDC type connector um, you can find. And so use one of those uh, male ones and uh, connect that uh, into your... You can solder directly actually on the pads because you're not going to use the JAMA uh, connection for anything. Unless you've wired your cab for JAMA uh, or you're making a scratch cab in that case. Um, you might want to do things differently, but that, I leave that up to you. Um, again, I will repeat myself, but again, this is a solution that is handy a, in an emergency. It won't get your shaker to move or anything like that. There's no outputs on it. And uh, and it, if you don't have this, if you don't have this, if you don't have most of these parts, it might not be much cheaper than, uh, than a, a Smarty Pie solution. Uh, to be honest, so consider that first if you if you if you don't mind waiting and if you're really stuck, this is what the emergency solution is, and uh, and it's actually a, it's a fun one to run for a little while. I actually run this, uh, I ran this in my two cabs uh, until I got a Smarty Pie, and I ended up selling uh, my Outrun boards because uh, I don't quite need them anymore. It just runs uh, just exactly the same now. But anyway, folks, thank you for watching. I hope this was interesting. Uh, happy raspberrying and pieing and outrunning. Uh, let me know how you get on. I'd love to hear um, uh, your uh, your success with it. And uh, And thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.